This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Elevator to the Gallows from 1957, directed by Louis Malm. He's back, RJ. It's only been like five weeks. Since what we've, form is he back in? Um, black and white form. Not Pog? No. He's not a Pog. He's a man. So what were you saying? It's been like, what, two weeks since the last Louis Mall film? Feels like it. So quick, tr- what? Quite the turnaround. It honest, it feels like a week. Like it feels like we did three Louis Malls, one other movie, and then another Louis Mall again. Oh, like that's it? how fast it seems. Well, you want to hear the tagline for this Louis Mall film? No. Frantic for life and love. Frantic for excitement. I said no. <laughs> I said no. And a synopsis for the film from Letterboxd. A self-assured businessman murders his employer, the husband of his mistress, which unintentionally provokes an ill-fated chain of events. Hmm. What do you feel about that? Well, that description? Yeah. I, I feel it kind of telegraphs things a little bit too much. It's a little spoilery. How do you feel about spoilers? Um, I don't know. I feel what if someone what if someone came up to you right now and told you how Morbius ended? I'd be would fine. you feel would you I'd be fine. You'd be okay with yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. I'd be okay with You'd that. be okay with someone telling you how Morbius ended? I would be. I'd be very okay with that cuz I had no intention of watching it. So I'm like I don't know what that means. But when I'm about to watch a movie, mm-hmm. um sign in and you'll know, watch it on the Criterion channel and I'm like what's this all about? And I read and I go ill-fated chain of events. Uh-oh. Uh- Oh, have you not seen this movie before? I had never seen this movie before. It's been on my Seems, radar. Uh, strange. It's been, on, it's been on my radar for a while. It's one of those uh, kind of latter day film noirs that are French films inspired by film noir. Even though a lot of film noir, including the noir part, comes from kind of the atmospheric black and white films of like kind of the late thirties. Those impressionist films, RJ. You know, you know about that Jean Gabin. You know that guy. Remember that guy. Love that guy. Uh, Jean Gabin, he's yeah. not in this. I know, but it's the those types of films kind of left an impression on the Americans doing the film noir, the real noirs, the hard noirs in the 40s. And this is 1957, very late in the noir cycle. And this is like definitely uh, following in the steps, I think, of that type of story, but turning it slightly on its head, slightly. Not too, not too violently, not too dramatically, but just a little bit. Where I feel that this movie mm. actually plays like a dark comedy more than anything a else. A dark comedy? Yes. And can you describe that? A dark comedy? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, would use, I would just self-fulfill it by using Elevator to the Gallows. And you go define, uh-huh. define Elevator to the Gallows. And then it goes around, yes, that's... around and around and around. That, that was my intent. It's beautiful. Okay. It's a beautiful thing. Interesting. Uh, so we'll, we'll kind of I'll take us through this movie here. Elevator of the Gallows. Pr- it's only a brisk ninety minutes. Um, oh, is that all? It's it's, it's, a, it's a it's a nice nice thing to see. Mm-hmm. Pop mm-hmm. movie in. Um, the movie opens up with a kind of an intense conversation between a man and a woman. Um, they are plotting something. We don't know what, but it seems very intense mm. about meeting. After something's ha- is going to go down, meeting at like a Denny's. Uh yeah, essentially the equivalent to nineteen fifties uh, Paris Denny's. Mm. Yeah, yeah, As, it's pretty close. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, but but, but it's a cafe. Like yeah, M- Mick Cafe. Mick Cafe. Yeah, it's right beside the Denny's. <laughs> right it's almost the same thing. Jared. Right, right down near there. So we got, yeah, yeah. we have um, Mrs. Carala and one Julian Tavonier. Who? You know, our, our, uh, our dude who's going to spend some time in an elevator, as it turns out. But before he gets to there, um, well, he's getting to work. He's uh, kind of setting up the appearance that he's around doing things. And then he's like telling this um, uh, secretary working late uh, at the end of the Friday. Working the uh, switchboard and sharpening pencils. 
Uh, it's like, well, I got one more thing I got to do back in my office and I'll be right out. And he goes back to his office and he busts out a grappling hook. And I don't know, RJ, how many Criterion films that we've watched to this point uh-huh. anyway, where grappling hooks have like been centerpieces of action. I'd say there's been at least three. Okay. And I name, feel like if you didn't notice, then... Name them. Name them, please. The three? Yeah. Um, Breakfast at Tiffany's. We, have, we never watched and, that movie, RJ. And, um, I've never, cause I've never, because yeah. I've never seen that movie in my life. So, continue. Yeah, Breakfast at Tiffany's. And, uh, there's that other movie, um, called, uh... Pizza Hut? So, grappling hooks. <laughs> I thought yes, that I'm like, yeah. man, this is pretty cool. <laughs> grappling hooks are pretty cool. No, grappling yeah. hooks are. And, pretty and this cool. guy just scales the side of this building real fast, lickety split. Because we find out later he's a paratrooper. What's he's, that? He's seen some shit. He's a soldier. For which army? Uh, France, I'm assuming. For France? Yeah, he's a Frenchman. Well, you, he could have fought for anyone, though. It's tr- I guess. I mean, that's usually not what you do. I mean, unless you're like some sort of mercenary, then you're fighting for like whoever pays you the most. Mm. Also true. Also true. So, well, it's curious that you asked that though, because his boss, he's going to take out, um, and he's got to do it real discreet, like, and make it look like a suicide, uh, because this guy's like a. The implication he's a bad guy. He's an arms mm-hmm. dealer. He's got those deals going on in Indochina. Indochina. No, it's, it's, it kind of reminded me of uh, Mister Arkadin, also also a uh, an arms <laughs> yeah, dealer. Kinda. Yeah, and this guy's like on the phone laughing about his deals. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> who cares? I'm making money. Oh, you think? Mm. Oh, you pull a gun on me, Mister Burn style? Oh, <laughs> you think you know how to use that? Give that to Are me. You- is that? Are you talking about taking candy from a baby, mm-hmm. Jarrett? Potentially. Ooh, potentially, we don't know that because it's only a silhouette in the first part of that two-parter. Do you remember the phone-in oh. thing when people would phone in and be like, "Who do you think shot yeah. Mr. Burns?" I do remember that. Yeah. Do you also remember Mad About You? Yeah. In Mad About You, they had a baby, and there's a phone-in thing. I was like, "What do you think they're going to name their baby?" And then it ended up being something like Mabel, and everyone was like, <laughs> "What?" Like the wrestler. <laughs> maybe maybe the wrestler is based off of the mad about you baby do you remember mabel i i remember mabel from mad about mad about you baby name mabel yeah mabel fuck i know now, now look up mabel about. wwf mabel wwf uh viscera viscera <laughs> yeah, it's the same. It's the same person, dude. Okay, that's that's the baby from Mad About You. <laughs> wow, it was a huge. Yeah, well, I I didn't realize that the, the Mad About You baby wound up becoming the king of the ring. Well, yeah, King, king what Mabel. Else is a, what else is a baby gonna do? I don't know. Yeah, babies are crap. They don't do much. Yeah. Well. So RJ. We get a nice little suicide setup, and apparently the sound, the, the the roar of a pencil sharpener was enough to dampen the shot of a gun being fired. And hence, hence uh, my hence my comment about sort of the this kind of uh, kind of drab comedy uh, that this film kind of feels like. We're just like it's so deadpan, it's so low key that it's just kind of there, and you'll either just go, oh, that's playful. Kind of like a black comedy, Jerp? Dark. A dark comedy? Mm-hmm. Is there is there a preferred term there? Uh, there, there? There could be. I mean, I'm sure it's maybe more accurate to use it, but I, just, I don't want to. I don't want to use it. Dark. You dark, don't want to? Darker, it. yeah. He, he doesn't want to. I don't want to. doesn't want to. then, you know, so everything's going pretty good. He's got his little knifey deal that he can kind of slide out so that the lock locks behind him. So it looks like the guy locked himself in and killed himself. And he's going Mm -hmm. to get off scot-free. And he he goes, slides down his grappling hook back to his office just as the, um, the secretary is with the security guard for the building and they're calling him in his office. And he's like, oh, I got to get to the phone before they realize I'm not there. And he's like, Niello. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. let's go right now. But the whole time I'm like, buddy, 
What about the grappling hook? What about the grappling hook? You're going to forget about the grappling hook? He'll get it later. Well, he's, no, he's totally forgot about it. No, he'll and, get it. Well, he'll try. Yeah. So. He'll try. So. Um, he leaves, and you keep thinking, what about what about the grappling hook? And he gets to his car. He's getting it running, and then we get kind of introduced to the, the flower girl. Who runs? Mm -hmm. uh, who's like? Who works at the flower shop across the street? Who's hanging out with her young, tough boyfriend? And she's like, "Oh man, one day I'd like to have a car just like Mister uh, Tavernier. Look at look how cool he is. He's such a cool guy." What did you think of the boyfriend? He reminded me of someone I know. Yeah, he is like Pompadour. He's <laughs> just like yeah. Like, like, <laughs> he's just like slicking his back of his hair back constantly. <laughs> and anytime someone says something, he go. <gasps> And he kind of like throw his hair a little bit this way or that way. And just, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. So, of course, at this point, our Tavernier guy, he looks up and he sees the grappling hook blowing in the wind. And he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so he like takes off, leaves the keys in the car. And he gets back into the building. He starts taking the elevator up. But mm -hmm. as he's in the elevator, the security guard turns the power off to the building. Yes, so you know. our, our boy, it's a weird move. our boy is stuck in the elevator to the gallows. Which gallows, Jarrett? I don't know. I guess that's the one where you get executed at. <laughs> like the gallows? The gallows. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. I thought it was like a euphemism for something. Oh, yeah, no, I so, um, yeah, this guy's stuck in an elevator, and um, this the young woman and from the flower shop and the, her boyfriend, they decide, uh, well, the, the boyfriend decides, I'm going to take this guy's car. And he's mucking around with it. She's like, no, don't do that. Don't drive, don't drive away. No, stop. Pull over. And then, but she's just like, she gets into it. They're going to they're gonna have a fun time, but as long as they return it, they're not, not, not going to dent it up. They're not going to do anything too bad. You know, mm, I do know. Do you think yeah. that's what they'll do, though? Uh, well, we'll find out. So uh, we go back to uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Karala, uh, who is played by uh, Jean Moreau. And she's, of course, a little a little put out. She, was, she went to the, the Denny's to meet uh, Tavernier after he takes care of her husband, makes it look like a suicide. They're going to be together. Everything's going to work out great. But it's not going to. Because she's like, where did he go? She's like, is he at the other Denny's? She, yeah, maybe I misunderstood. She goes out to the street. She sees his car, and she sees a guy driving the car, so she assumes it's him, and she's and he's with this young woman. She's like, I can't believe it. This must be some sort of mistake. He wouldn't do said, this to is me. Is this a joke? And uh, she proceeds to walk around quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um... And, of course, uh, I don't know if at this point I should ask about or mention the Miles Davis uh, score. Score? Yeah. I mean, I saw at the at the top of it, I saw a score by Miles Davis. And I went, I went, uh, oh, that's, I was like, that's neat. I really like Miles Davis. And then this movie plays out and I hear it sometimes, but I didn't, I didn't hear it a lot. Is that just me? Well, there's uh, sequences where it's more prevalent, particularly when yeah. um, the uh, uh, Moreau character is walking around and being all sad with the rain falling on her, kind of just walking down the mm -hmm. streets with men leering at her, people, all kinds of people leering, and she just walks around sort of in a trance. Mm -hmm. So, How, who have you leered at lately? <laughs> who have I leered at lately? Well, I mean, if you tune in earlier, folks, to uh, mm -hmm. our, our discussions about um, Star Trek and uh, porn parodies. Oh, that's who you've been leering at? <laughs> Apparently. I mean, you, you saw Worf, didn't you? I, I did see Worf. Yeah. I'm always looking for Worf, baby. You know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You know that. Even even though you got data there behind you. Speaking of which, where's data in, in our porn parody? 
I mean, I, oh, my, 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 my understanding is that he is fully functional. He is fully functional, and if you say otherwise, that's uh, bullshit. Because that was canon from the start. No, from the start, Jerry. Pretty, pretty yeah. yeah it's like episode three, I think. Well, Data is not there, and um, I mean, I, Bev Crusher's not there, and I get why Wesley's not there. That would be problematic. But like Q could have been there, and they could they could have had a Borg in there. Who else would you have wanted well, to see in that? It is in continuity. Maybe Wesley was already had already left. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be good. Get him out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let the adults get down to business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, so yeah, we 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 have basically three things going down in the movie. We have elevator times. We've got young young couple in love uh, with the car, and then some motel times, and we have uh, sad uh, Jean Moreau walking around the streets, going to different cafes, uh, looking for her her man, and trying to uh, understand what's going on. She even goes back to the her you know her now dead husband's uh, business to see what's up, but she's it's all locked up and she can't get in. She keeps wandering about. So. Uh, during one of the, while well, the car is being taken out by the young couple, uh, they kind of run across some friendly Germans. As opposed to, I don't know, they're from Munich. They're they're very cheery. Uh, even though, and they, they yeah. even like have a, a car accident where the guy's uh, vehicle gets smashed up, and he's like, ha, 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 "That hasn't happened before. Come, let me buy you. Uh, let let us stay in the same <laughs> motel room together." <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he's he's just like the nicest guy. And it's like he is the nicest hey, guy. It's like, dude, let's party. <laughs> he he does. He's he's like, want to have a drink? Mm-hmm. He's like, y'all bad boys like champagne? Nope. And he goes, mm-mm. And check in. Um, our dude is still in the elevator. He is trying to, like, find ways out. He's spending a lot of time with his little uh, lighter. Looking up. He's look- he's undoing screws. Yeah, look, and- looking at corners, checking up. He gets the doors open, but he realizes he's in between floors, and he's too low to crawl up out onto the next floor or t- and can't get down to the bottom part. Um Eventually, this escalates to him like realizing, "Hey, there's a carpet beneath me. I can I can undo that, uh, but the, undo those snaps, those fasteners, and hey, mm-hmm. there's a little plate underneath here I can lift up." And of course, it's just a big drop down to the bottom of the elevator shaft. Uh, he lights up his pack of cigarettes uh, and drops it down to see how far of a drop it is. It's quite a bit. Uh, and of course, he's got this idea like, "Well, you know, maybe I can like swing down on this uh, cable." And I can uh, undo this latch on the door that will get me to safety. And I can finally get out of here. So no one finds me in a building with my dead boss. Yeah. Because uh, imagine explaining that at the next staff function. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, one yeah. of the uh, night watchmen... They're doing the rounds. He stops by, starts the elevator just to power up things. And, of course, the elevator starts going down while he's at the bottom of this cable. And there's a there's a near-death experience almost being had. But mm-hmm. the power gets back, turned back off. And he's like, oh. So he crawls back in to the elevator and eventually falls asleep. Um, so then uh, yeah, we have uh, Moreau looking sad, being rained on. And then uh, Gesundheit. I tried to mute it. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there's, yeah, the late night strolling takes her to another, like, you know, late night 4 a.m. cafe, and then she meets some guy. That, yeah, she does meet a guy. Yeah, she starts hanging out with that dude. He seems to know her, kind of. Yeah, I think it's like, very... I think he probably knows her and knows her husband and stuff like that. And, yeah. so, and so he's loaded and trying to be, you know, affable, but, you know, also available. Uh, so yeah, the the young couple hanging out with the uh, the older uh, German couple. Uh, mm-hmm. The the young guy he starts getting a little squirrely. He's kind of like, we can't hang out here long. Like he's just like, no, nah, uh, something feels off about this. I'm gonna take off. But like, but instead of just like you know leaving and taking the car they arrived in, he's going to like steal this German guy's car. And uh, 
of course, it seems like the German man was expecting this. It's like, ah, <laughs> I've got a gun. But well, he did. He the German guy did make note like before. He's like, he's like, uh, he's like, I know you aren't who you say you are. Right? Yes. He's like, yeah. Mister, who is not this guy? And then he goes in there. and He's like, Are you looking for this? <laughs> and he gets him because the German guy is awesome. He's awesome. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He didn't even lock the car because he knew it was going to happen. He yeah. was like, I don't give a frig. You don't, you don't know about the second gear? <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, the, the young guy's got the car, the gun from um, Tavernier's um, console. And he shoots him. And then the, the, the German guy's wife comes running out. And she gets shot, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that guy really goes on a rampage. Yeah. And then, uh, the, the so young guy, flower girl, they get away, and they drive back into the city, and they're not sure what to do. They park the car, uh, kind of on a bridge. They walk back to the girl's apartment, where they fail to kill themselves. They sure try, though. Yeah, I, I mean, she apparently just has like sleeping pills in this like a little yeah. tube, and she's just like, "Yeah, we'll take a whole, we'll take like five each of these, and then we'll die, and then we won't have to worry about anything anymore." There's, nothing, there's no point of yeah. living anymore, and uh, and then we're just going to fall asleep. And then there's uh, that lady really rips them later when mm-hmm. <laughs> she's like, "You stupid, you stupid, clumsy bitches!" He's like, "This won't kill you." And I quote, <laughs> "It." She said something like that. Stupid, so, lazy bitches. Clumsy. Yeah. Clumsy. Yeah. It's something similar, I should say. All those lines. Yeah. And like, yeah. Um, so yeah, then we get uh, uh, yeah back to the Moreau character, uh, Mrs. Carolla. Uh, she's been picked up by the by the fuzz uh, along because they're all out too late, breaking curfew, and a whole a lot of sex workers are arrested in this um, scoop up. So she's being taken to the police headquarters. And uh, when she gets there, she, of course, drops her last name. And everyone's like, oh, well, we all know how important your husband is. It's like, well, he's not around right now. He's in, I don't know, what is it, the Alps or something like that. Um, and so, like, they're very, like, oh, well, yes, of course, we won't, there won't be an official report. And you can leave right now. But uh, one, one, one little last thing. Um, your your husband, he, he works with a man named Tavernier. Mm-hmm. And she's like, sure, she has that look of like, uh, I, I, the name sounds familiar. I believe so. Because, of course, I guess I failed to mention that when the, the young couple were running rampant, hanging out with these the Germans and checking in at the motel, the name they kept giving was that of uh, Tavonier. And that's what they kept saying was they were Mr. and Mrs. Mm-hmm. And so this guy, uh, while, while the real Tavonier is sitting in an elevator... Uh, there's these young people running around, essentially setting him up for murders that he did not commit. Mm. What what else are they trying to do with him? Uh, that's about it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Nothing else. Not, nothing. That's all. I mean, it was kind of like an accident. Man, no. I thought something else happened. Well, that's about it. They were, they took his yeah. trench coat. They used his gun, but you know, just because they just happened to have it. So the thing he has no idea mm-hmm. how how things are looking for him inside his elevator. Yeah, well, yeah, and he 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 runs away and he eats what six hundred croissants. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she finds out that her um, yeah, so the Moreau she yeah, yeah. the croissants come later. Oh, I thought you were uh, already. Oh no, no 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 no. So. Yeah, she finds out that uh, Tavernier was like out and like a suspect and killing some guy, had some woman, and she's like, "Oh, I see." <laughs> like, but mm-hmm. and she's kind of like, "Well, I'm gonna bur- I'm gonna throw this guy to the walls," even though it's like, "Well, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense." Uh, and so, yeah, she, I think she kind of like I'm not sure what the leap is in the movie, but um, at some point she kind of. It dawns on her that it was there was like this young woman that was in the car, and she was, she's like, oh, maybe it's like this that flower girl from across the street from where they work. Uh, well, well what a oh yeah, and then a, the tendency. Comes yeah, after, but right? yeah, because then she goes to the flower shop, asks where she lives, mm-hmm. and then 
Yeah, there's also a scene too where like the the poli- there's like a scene where the police are giving essentially a press release to the the press about what yeah. they think happened, and it's like ah this like very arrogantly saying ah this happened and this happened, this is what their motivation was. Um, well, they they also they get a description of the woman because of the uh, the hotel people because the the flower girl goes in there, but the the young boy doesn't. So they have a description of the woman, mm-hmm. and then that lady kind of figures it out too. And then they put out a press release that it's the her like the guy with the flower girl, yeah. the guy in the elevator, and then that lady goes to the apartment, gets the address of the. Uh, flower girl from the and flower then, shop and then she yes yeah. that's yeah and then uh of course even before that happens uh this is when the police go to check out where tavernier works because they're, they're, they're looking for him so they go to where he has where he actually has his office and while unknowing that he's actually in the elevator uh they turn the power on and of course they go upstairs on the other elevator and he gets out on the other elevator and he's like well, I got to go up and uh, get that grappling hook. He goes up there. It's not there. He goes, he leaves because he's like, doesn't want to get caught. Mm-hmm. Or actually, does he even think about going back to the elevator for looking for the grappling hook? Because I know at one point the grappling hook actually just like fell on its own. No, he does. He doesn't go up there because so what happens is um, he, uh, the elevators get turned on and he goes up and he listens to what's going on. Right. And because uh, he doesn't know anything about the young people taking his car or anything like that, no. So he yeah, thinks he's that people are that. just he thinks people are just looking for that guy. So he's like, "Oh, I better scram!" So they don't know I was actually here. Yes. He goes out and his car was gone, but then he sees yeah. someone but, giving but, tickets. But, but he also thinks that the cops took his car. Yeah, because there's someone ticketing cars right but, there. But and... he never does think about the grappling hook <laughs> again. No, but no, but, he... but the grappling hook solved itself because it just like fell to the ground. Yeah. No, the grappling hook is not his priority anymore because he spent two days in an elevator. So then he runs to the... A ca- day. A day. A day, day and a half. Maybe. Yeah, but those French people like, love snacking, Jared. Wow, that's the... Well, wow. anyway, yeah. He, he gets where he goes looking. He's he's going to... He's munching on some croissant, and then he orders more croissant. And then, of course, he, I, just, and then he doesn't realize his face is on the front page of the newspaper saying that he murdered yeah. two, two tourists. And then the police show up, pick him up. And then we get an interrogation where they're forcing him to stand in a dark room, and mm-hmm. uh, they're trying to. And they keep going through it over and over and over again, trying to get him to slip up. Mm-hmm. And then they're this, trying. Yeah, and this is where uh, Moreau uh, goes to the flower shop and then figures out the flower girl was involved, and she goes and finds their apartment, finds um, that they tried drugging themselves. Uh, and she admonishes them for being sloppy at it and not doing a very good job of it. She locks them in saying, well, I'm going to go to the police and I'm going to tell them what you did and that this is what really happened. Uh, And then she leaves, she throws the newspaper at them. And of course, uh, a young young man, uh, he looks at the newspaper and goes, wait a minute, they think, they don't even think it's us. They think it's that guy. And it's like, we're we're in the clear. But then she's like, oh, wait a minute. What about that roll of film from that camera mm-hmm. that we were shooting with uh, that belonged to Tavernier? Oh, fuck. I went and developed it. <laughs> so we better go. We got to go back to the motel. Pick, mm-hmm. We have the receipt. Pick up the film so they don't see that we we were with the couple and it wasn't the other guy. Um, of course, um, Moreau, uh, Cav- mm-hmm. she know, she's like, aha, I'm going to tail this guy to the motel. This scamp. And of course, it all converges um, with the the young guy and this woman showing up at the motel. They go to the uh, the, the dark room that's just like out in the open. And let me tell mm-hmm. you, RJ, that is not how dark room photography would work. Where, where's your dark room? Uh, at work. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I couldn't just come in if I wanted. It wouldn't look like that. You can't just, much of a dark room. Can't just like, I don't even think there's a door. They just like walk into a space and it's like fully lit. And uh, especially when you're waiting for paper to reveal, it's like, no, nah, you need safe light. So that's fun. So mm. anyway, um, of course, the, the it's too late for the young man. His fortunes have already been sealed. The photo of him hanging out with the people. Here's the people we, here's the guy we killed, smiles together. And it's like, you're going away for a long time. And then, um, 
Mrs. Uh, Karala, she's like, oh, thank you for your great work. Time to go. She's like, oh, just one more thing, says the detective. It's like, that's not all we found on the film. Mm -hmm. And then we see all these photos of the happy couple together. Uh, It's like, Mm -hmm. who who took these photos? Good question. Who did take the photos? And and, and then we get some strange description of the sentencing in France in a scenario like this, where it's like, well, you know, your boyfriend who who actually killed your husband, he'll get like ten years because you know, you know, a dude's got to do what he's got to (laughs) do. But well, he's like every every dude's got got some lady he's got to do stuff for, and he's got to. Well, I mean, he he killed because he he wanted some. And he wanted mm-hmm. to make it nice and clear, like who, where the designations were. He had to kill this guy. He's a bad guy, but you, you are this guy's the dead man's wife, and you're going to get to like twenty years. <laughs> justice system, <laughs> justice, just us, justice, yes, justice. So it's anyway, a justice system. That's the that's the movie. Uh, yes. It is a movie. That is the whole. And then it goes, Finn. Finn, as as they do. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I actually enjoyed this movie. I thought it was uh, okay. So this is the feature film debut of uh, Louis Mal. This is his first movie. Uh, there's a lot of talk with this movie and it being improvised, which I find mm-hmm. strange because this movie is like super what pop. Part? I don't know because I think it's like this weird like fetishizing of jazz music and how Miles Davis <laughs> does improvisation and they're like, yeah it's okay. like it's in the spirit of improvisation things are just improvised I'm like no 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 this this movie is like pretty tight like this movie like is like really like clearly shot and laid out planned out uh, mm-hmm. so I am not getting that yeah I'm I don't really know what that means either because uh Maybe it's just the jazz part. Because... I think more so that, but yeah, there's some. Because, I mean, there is like, like it's tight in the sense where there's, there's like mention that he doesn't pay parking tickets in the first five minutes. And then the last 10 minutes where he, when he, or 20 minutes when he thinks his car is towed, it's because he sees someone else giving tickets. He goes, the tickets. He's like, yeah, I'm infamous for not paying parking tickets. And it's like, yeah, that's very clearly planned beforehand. Um, and even that German guy, that guy couldn't have been in prop. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the leather jacket kid with his hair slicked back. Maybe they're like, you do whatever you want because that, I mean, that kid was just, he was like, <clears throat> he was just walking around being pouty. So maybe it was him, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You're not sure. Um, a couple of shots that I thought stood out, um, and like, there's the one that's telegraphed in a way that I'm like, why is this in the sh- movie? Because it's it's a really n- nice th- moment that really pays off at the very end, where she's mm-hmm. I think it was like when she gets out of jail and she's getting into this car and it's kind of a black finish of a car and she looks down in the reflection of it and it's super clear and it's like this image of her looking at herself in this like black abyss and it's just like. It, the way that it appears, because it's a black and white movie, is like you see her, like, you know, blonde hair, um, you know, pale complexion kind of just be reflected, and then all the shadows completely disappear into the blackness of the car. And I was like, oh, that's a kind of a striking uh, picture. And then, of course, the final, one of the well, one of the final shots of the whole movie is her looking in the darkroom photography chemicals, and she's looking at the darkness of the, the chemical, and it's the exact same mirrored shot. I have no idea mm-hmm. what the relevance of it is or what uh, we want to read into this, but I, I thought it was like it, it, the weird setup of it earlier, and then you get this kind of payoff at the very end of it of herself looking into her uncertain dark future. I don't know, but I don't. Again, I'm like, how is this improvised? <laughs> I think um, it seems pretty planned to me. But have you ever heard of metaphors? Uh, no. I, I are, are, are those are those new? Uh, yeah, it's this new concept I heard about. It's pretty yeah. crazy, but yes. But I think that's what it is. <sighs> yeah, I I seem like I was just coming across people talking about this being improvised or something like that, and I'm like, well, I mean, but it's all about the the soundtrack that everyone, everybody apparently just loses their shit over the opening <laughs> the opening paragraph of the essay uh, by Ron Douche. 
uh, for the for the Criterion release, Chef du Cinema Elevator to the Gallows. It opens up with him saying, I hate to admit it, but as much as I enjoy watching Elevator to the Gallows, I think I'd be just as happy if everything were cut out of it except for Jean Moreau wandering the Champs-Élysées at night and accompanied by Miles Davis's um, elegic um, soundtrack. It's those scenes that really make the movie for me. I mean, here's the thing. I like Miles Davis. I listen to Miles Davis. I like Coltrane. I like jazz. I listen to that stuff. Um, it's cool that it's in a movie, but it's like I said, like it, it was a, that's kind of, um, wasn't the pri like, like the primary poll for me for this one. You could just listen to Miles Davis to any movie. You just turn the movie on mute. You know what I mean? Miles, Miles Davis's score for the film is considered by many to be groundbreaking with jazz critic Phil Johnson describing it as the loneliest trumpet sound you'll ever hear and the model for sad core music ever since. Hear it and weep. Sad core, hey? Sad core. That's what they call it. Uh, how about uh, New Yorker film critic Richard Brody claiming the film is more important for its place in French film history than for its own artistic merits, with the exception of the Miles Davis score, which he said, quote, is worth hearing entirely on its own. It's better than the film itself by far, and there are better ways to hear it than in the movie. Namely, by listening to a CD that features the entire studio sessions from which the score was edited. Mm. I mean, again, it's cool. Jazz. How smooth is it? It's jazz. jazz. So it's always but, smooth, unless it's acid it, jazz. Then it burns. Hey, can can you uh, can you give me a sample of what the jazz sounds like? No, I I couldn't. Jared. I, I only know I only know scat. Well, what's that one? You know that one that one little part of the song. Everyone knows it. It's the most recognizable one. You know the one I mean. Well, what I want to bring up though from this this essay before I ask what you think about this film, RJ, because I feel like this really gets down to it. Um, mm -hmm. How do you feel about chili? The country or the food? The food. I love chili. Well, I mean, you know that Miles Davis had a chili recipe in his, uh, what is it? Uh, was it Miles Davis's Southside Chicago Chili Mac? I got. The, Let me don't, have a look. Don't, at don't, this. don't worry, I've got it here. I can send this to your your way. Okay. Um, bacon grease, two tablespoons, three large cloves, garlic, minced. One green and one red pepper, cut into strips. Two pounds okay. ground lean chuck. Okay. I, I use seventy-five twenty-five ground chili beef. Two teaspoons ground cumin. Uh, half a jar of mustard. Four tablespoons. Uh, mm -hmm. Half a shot glass of white vinegar. Two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. Two teaspoons chili powder. Um, salt two and tea, two teaspoons chili yeah. powder. Yeah. Okay. This the, apparently the per the author of this wrote. Uh, one tablespoon they used salt and pepper to taste pinto or kidney beans two 15 ounce cans drained one can of tomatoes one canned beef broth two cups um for a serving linguine or spaghetti oyster crackers grated parmesan cheese this is and then there's instructions on how to prepare it. Is this like it. Chicago style chili? This like is on, this like is, on no, spaghetti. This is Miles Davis's South Side Chicago Chili Mac. Okay. It's not the chili that I like. Th this like, is I mean, I don't put my chili on stuff. You know what I mean? Like I make I make I make my chili chili kind of thing. It's... This is on a this is from uh John Schwed's biography of Davis. Okay. There, there's good stuff there, but uh, I, f I feel like there's, yeah, like it's definitely something. It's a topping chili, so it's it, like you said, spaghetti or crackers. I don't know about crackers, but uh, um, I like to make my chili a little bit different. But the mustard, I think, is an interesting thing. I think I'm gonna put a, a spoon or two of mustard in into mine the next time I make it. But there's a few, there's a few things that overlap. There's a few things that overlap. Only one Patreon has my chili recipe. Mm -hmm. And if you want my chili, if you want Creeps chili, got to become a Patreon. 
Sam Loveland will tell you. Mm-hmm. Or actually, was it Jared Berger? <laughs> Fuck, I can't remember now. Oh, One no. of those guys has it. It's leaked. It's out there. One of those guys has it. But they they wouldn't give it up because they're Patreon exclusives and they know. They know. <laughs> they know. Somebody has my chili recipe. I can't remember who. I think it was Sam. That doesn't sound. Maybe safe it was Jared me. Berger. It was one of those two. I can't remember. Maybe, it was a long time maybe, ago. Maybe it was Frank. It was not Frank. It was either Sam or Jared. Okay. And they're gonna say, "How do you not remember?" And I'm gonna say, "I don't remember anything. I don't yeah. even remember what we talked about at two hours ago." <laughs> what are we talking about right now? I don't With even remember. Elevator to the gallows in Chile. Oh right, right. Yeah, uh, Miles Davis. But anyway, yeah, no. So. I had kind of low to no expectations to Elevator to the Gallows, but I actually found it uh, really easy to watch um, mm-hmm. and uh, easy yeah, easy enough to get into and follow the story and uh, held my attention, which, again, is uh, a quite the feat uh, mm-hmm. 335 Criterions later, especially for a new movie that I haven't seen mm-hmm. before. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. RJ, what did you think of Elevator to the Gallows? If shit in your pants is cool, consider me Miles Davis. Remember that one, Jarrett? Nope. Is that what you were going to use at the end of the episode? No, I mean, that's all you, my friend. Oh, okay. Uh, Elevator to Gallows. Um, I, too, have not seen said film. But I have seen a lot of Louis Maul in the last month. I'll tell you that much. Four of um, them. Four of them in like fucking as many weeks. Uh, so I watched this movie and um, you you uh, you did the whole rundown. I think this movie starts great, like the first 10, 15 minutes and then getting stuck in the elevator. Grab my attention. I went, ooh, I like this. Elevator times. I was like, elevator times. That's cool. And then uh, that that piece of shit greaser steals the car, and I went, "Hmm, this could create considerable tension and conflict for people." Mm-hmm. And like, then like, we're, like, we're, we're, we're talking like Morbius levels. I was like, "This is almost Morbius level conflict and tension." It's not quite, but it's almost up to the Morbius. Um, yes, yeah, so I was. <laughs> I was like, "Who?" And then and then tension does ensue. So here's my uh here's my short take on uh, Elevators to the Gallows. I think some of this movie is really really good. I was like, "Yeah. I like this. This is good stuff." And then some of the movie, I was like, "Hmm. You kind of annoy me." <laughs> like what? At at some points. The the kids, the kids annoy the shit out of me. Like the kids who steal the car. And I know it's just like that's what their characters are. They're supposed to be shitty little kids. I get that. Um, but li- literally, the, the greaser boy character annoys me. Every time I saw him on screen, I was like, get out. I was like, I don't want to look at you. You're talking about, you're talking about Georges Pajuli? Yeah, yeah. He just annoyed me. You, you know, uh, if I, I get this correctly, and this is a, a what? You know who that is? That's the that's the know. that that's the boy from Forbidden Games. From uh like the Christmas movie Forbidden Games? Uh Christmas movie? <laughs> <laughs> what is Forbidden the the nineteen fifty two Rene Clement World War movie on the farm with the, the little girl whose oh. family gets uh blown up oh. and then she winds up living with them? There's like the main little boy who's building the like little uh uh graveyard full of animals. That's the same kid. I... I, I thought you meant what's that one? It's like Dial Santa Claus. No. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that called Forbidden Games also, or something? Uh, something of this. It's sort. got it's got a bunch of different titles. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I mean that makes sense now. He's he's grown up, and he's shittier than ever. Deadly. Um, you're thinking of Deadly Games, I suppose. Yeah. At least Games was in the title. Um, yeah. So yeah, my my actual. Um, my knock isn't against the movie itself. I just hated that fucking guy. And he actually like was, every... and he actually was, uh, like seventeen in that. Yeah. So well, authentic. A lot, of, a, lot authentic. This, a lot of this movie seems genuine in that sense. Um, 
Yeah, no, he just annoyed the shit out of me. Every time I saw him, I was like, Ugh. I was like, oh, I hate you. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I really, really like the idea of just a dude stuck in an elevator for a whole movie mm-hmm. and then stuff happening while he's in there. Uh, you like that uh, Devil's movie? <laughs> Uh, Devil, the M. Night Shyamalan one. Well, produced by. It's Devil. 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 Singular Devil. Get it it right. Oh, uh, John Eric Dowdle. Dowdle. Uh, I've seen that movie. I thought it was a movie for sure. Um, To be sure. To be sure. No, I I love the idea of the the elevator stuff. And um, I don't. I, I also like the idea of like people on the run some some parts about it it almost feels like two movies to me if that makes sense well i guess it's like three movies it is, it is three movies because then it's also a, a spy movie kind of and a spy espionage love romance movie mm. on the other side of that um so uh the the thing i liked the most was the elevator stuff um the the kid's story i like that german guy he's super cool i just hated the kid every time i saw him i got annoyed uh and like (laughs) i mean i know it was uh i know it was like a different time man it was the 50s but like every time that girl's like we shouldn't do this and he's like shut up babe why are you on my case (laughs) and he'd like flick his hair he'd be like i just killed a guy what's the big deal and I was like, oh, my God. He has a line in this, too, too which uh, made me think of the king of the incels. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where So the German guy's like, well, what do you think of this or that? And he's like, my generation has other things on the mind, man. He's like, we think about more than what your problems That's are. A, right? See, again, this is where you mean you're talking about beatniks? No. Well, yeah, that, too. But uh, I, I think this guy's also an incel. Um, I mean, you could apply that to anything, I guess, at this point now. And I do. I, I do. guess. I mean, <laughs> have have fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a beatnik, but I also think he's kind of an incel. I think this is an incel fanfic because it's like the story of this kid who's like trying to date someone, but he doesn't have money and he feels down about it. So he like tries to take the money or like take take the possessions like the car to get the lady uh, but that doesn't work either. So then he acts out violently towards old German people. You yep. understand? I, I'm aware. Yeah. But yeah, the beat the beatneck part when he said that, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, what a nerd. <laughs> He's like, we got other things on our mind. And I was like, oh, gr- gross. Um, so, yeah, that guy just annoyed me a lot. Uh, the uh, the lady's um, side story of looking for the guy, I thought that was fine. It's just, you know, part of the puzzle, part of the puzzle. But, uh, yeah, I really – my biggest thing, I, I, I just like the elevator stuff. I just thought that was well done. Um, all right, I just – I liked that part of the story the most. And it is a, it's a well-made movie. It's like I said, the scenes with the parking ticket stuff and, like, how that kind of comes full circle. I thought that was uh, – that was well kind of laid out. Um, well laid out. That's how you say that word. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's – um, it's crisp like uh it's well put together and they um i don't know there's i don't think there's any like major holes or anything like that <laughs> other than maybe like he was grappling out of the window someone probably saw him nah who who no one looks up on the streets of paris uh-huh. uh yeah people probably don't look up but um no there's no uh there's no um gaping holes in this movie i don't think oh wow you know what I mean? Uh, no, it's a. Uh, I think I know what you're driving at. It's a. It's a good little show, and there's no there's no weird mother relations, which is a a fresh a Louis a Louis Mall first. Yeah. A Louis Mall first. And yeah, I mean, it's got grappling hooks and chili recipes. So. Uh. Yeah, but was the chili recipe part of the movie, or is that just something you found afterwards? Well, it's in the Criterion uh, essay that, of course, everyone reads. Oh. So, I mean, it's part of the experience now. Um, I yeah, yes, it is. You know, did, I, did... I, I, I'm just going to say, I, I don't really care one way or another about Miles Davis. 
But so I mean that, uh, that I was pretty indifferent to that, but I'm glad a lot of people find a lot of happiness, I guess, in it. I mean, I like Coltrane more, to be very honest. Um, but uh, I don't know, jazz is cool. People allegedly people take out. <laughs> I mean, I like listening to jazz, but when only when I'm doing stuff, like if I'm working or uh, reading or something, that's when I like to listen to it. Mm-hmm. I don't just throw it on when, like, I don't know, when, to listen to music. When what? Like when you're doing what? I don't know. Just any time I don't just throw it on. <laughs> it's like I have a task to do is when I throw it on. <laughs> Vacuuming? No, yeah, I don't. I don't throw it on when I'm vacuuming. I'll put on like other mu- like music with the lyrics and what, stuff. What kind of music? Uh, do you know a band called Blink One Eighty Two and mm. Outcast, Jarrett? I'm. A, you know those guys? Yeah, those guys. You know those guys? Did you listen to those on CDR? Uh, I too listen to a couple of them on CDR. Okay, all right, just a couple. Oh, you want to hear? Helpful. You want to hear from some people who uh, aren't fans of Elevator to the Gallows? Uh, I'm sure there's a few. Well, uh, we got some half stars to kick us off. We got Kath oh. Kath Go, half a star. Kath Go. We couldn't finish the last thirty minutes. It was just too ridiculous. In the beginning, I thought this would be a really good, smart film. It was a joke. So was Kath Go. Uh. Sorry, it's voting. Actually, I don't know if Kath goes a joke or not. Letterbox is being slow at the moment. Uh oh. For me, I'm clicking on her name. Okay, McLean. Here we go. Bio. I love old movies for the timeless glamour, high fashion, smart dialogue, and just desserts. Hayes Code was okay by me. I also like desserts. My all time favorite actors are Irene Dunn and Greer Garson. With Teresa Wright and Charles Boyer trailing close behind. Terrific. <laughs> Favorite films include Random Harvest, Greer Garson, and three films that have not loaded yet, Jarrett. Oh. Oh, Together Again with um, Irene Dunn. That's one of her favorites. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, and two films that haven't loaded yet, Jared. <laughs> okay. So, you know, Letterboxd, it's doing pretty good at the moment. Well, it's a good thing I, uh, copy and paste my selections beforehand. Yeah. Well, I gotta do mine live, but yeah. it's not the internet, because you can clearly still hear me. I think Letterboxd is struggling. Okay. Well, I got another, I got a one-star review from Ryan2. Okay. Who writes, just watching this for the Crazy Davis score. It's Was it crazy? I don't, I don't know. Didn't no. care much for the French movie. I knew <laughs> it would boring from the first sentences spoken. Colonist war criminal gets stuck in the elevator. Thumbs up. Uh, very interesting, Jarrett. Very interesting. Ryan, too. I give an extra half star to movies with with good train or bike scenes. Um, interesting. Hmm. So their favorite films include Starstruck, Cafe Lumiere, Two Seconds, and My Winnipeg. But the interesting thing is right after Elevator to the Gallows, they watched Star Trek Five or Four, sorry, The Voyage Home. Mm-hmm. And he says, I think Spock gets called the R word in this one. Thumbs up. Mm. Is there is their review? He's called a Ryan. Yeah, he gets called a Ryan. Okay. Which is, is that is that bad? Someone also commented on his review and said e- exactly. Hmm. To his review. Okay. Uh, next we got of Silver Silence, one and a half stars. Visually mm. great. Stunning score from Miles Davis. I really Stunning. should have enjoyed it, but I really did it. I a very thin story riddled with holes and some terrible dialogue, and it really annoyed me that he left his car running and I never warmed to the film after that. Hmm. Holes. What holes? What kind of holes? Gaping? Gaping. 
Uh, favorite films include A Dog's Life, Popeye the Sailor meets Sinbad the Sailor, mm-hmm. Police Story, and Drive My Car, which is a new movie. New movie. That's all seems good. You're a Popeye man, right? I do like those old Popeyes, those Fleischers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about spinach? That's pretty good. Yeah, spinach is good. Sometimes. Sometimes. What about that Humpty spinach salad? Oh, it's all about that, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Well, they put a boiled egg on top of that thing ever? Mm-hmm. They do. Ooh, shit. Some, uh, some honey mustard. For... Oh, and that's finally, that also well, how about good. one more? This is a lengthy one from Robert Fuller. Old Bob, one and a half stars. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is really stupid. And I'm shocked that Louis Mal made his reputation on this. There's like three movies here. A dumb criminal comedy of errors, a criminal teen lovers on the run movie, and, well, a movie in which Jean Moreau tediously mopes around in the rain to Miles Davis. The three intersect only insofar as a laboriously set up Julian's being inadvertently framed for the murder of the German couple. But I mean, why? What purpose does this protracted and predictable exercise in irony serve? Jesus Christ. What pur- I sure I, got him. Uh, what purpose? I was hoping this whole movie would be set in the elevator. It's even in the damn title. Every cutaway to the insufferable teens or to the histrionic Moreau, whose thoughts are helpfully narrated for us in voiceover to keep Mal from having to, you know, direct and stuff, is a tension-destroying mm. slam on the brakes. Plot holes are innumerable. Why Why are you people talking about holes? You, this, these two guys? <laughs> like, what? I said there weren't holes. I know, but why did you bring it up at all? <laughs> Because I thought it was, I thought it would be something to mention that there weren't holes. Well, I mean, it's not like Jordy's fallen in any holes, so I mean, I'm not sure why it's being brought up. <laughs> Jordy did fall in a hole, not, not even not, just but, once. Well, not this week. Well, not this week, but he did fall in some holes. Plot, oh my god! Plot holes are innumerable. <laughs> why does the Moreau character get arrested? Was a scene deleted? <laughs> Huh. How does the grappling hook end up on the ground? Why does no one ever think about fingerprints in the case of the Germans? Because they're French. Or gunpowder residue in the case of the initial murder. It's like a duel between Paris's dumbest criminals and its dumbest cops. No surprise, I suppose, that the ending of the film is utter nonsense. Oh my god. This is Robert Fuller, right? Yeah. Hey, Jarrett. <laughs> You want to hear a movie that they gave a half a star to? Okay. It's a 2001 film. Okay. Called uh, The Hole. I <laughs> uh, see. They hate it. They hate holes. What did holes ever do to you? <laughs> and right before it, there's a movie. What? Speak up. Speak up. The ghoul's interrupting. <laughs> The movie before he gave half star was boys, so it says boys hole. Uh, you can't write this. What, what stuff, about you guys. a what about a film called Soul? There, no, he didn't. It, so it's it can't be intentional. It, it's not. It, there's no troll toll for any boys soul or boys hole for that matter. Damn holes, holes, man! Watch out. They gave five stars to the movie holes. No, I'm just kidding. I made that up. Yeah, now you're just lying. But they did give a movie called The Hole half a star, which I find I find comical. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's good stuff. Hmm. Well, there you go. Holes. Uh, any holes? final? Any other final thoughts on uh, Elevator to the Gallows? Uh, I mean, it's pretty slick. I think it... I think this is one that is due for a revamp, Jared. Maybe like a revamp. Os- maybe like Mark Ruffalo uh, or an Oscar Isaac. Oh. <laughs> or maybe Amy Adams is the lead in the elevator. Maybe Jeremy Renner. Bring bring it in to the MCU proper. Yeah, this could be. Yeah, this could. What would be maybe if they'll be dead? Like maybe they'll, they're all dead. I mean, they might be. But uh, if any MCU character would be the lead in this, which would it be? Um, like a Marvel, any Marvel character. That, that German guy. Morbius? 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, is Morbius that... German? What? Morbius is Morbius no, German. I know. I, I just said the, the German guy in the movie. He'd be great. Oh, is he in the MCU? He could be. He translated. Oh, well. okay. He, he was loving life. He said, I, "I follow." Yeah. Okay. Anyways, enough. I follow. Enough. Cut. Cut, cut it out. Uh. After the break, well, we should have taken those photos of us. Uh, lounging about, gallivanting in the park. Because now we're going to jail. 